Hey, Pyromaniacs. This is the unbreakable Sean Phoenix, and you're listening to Wrestling with Entertainment. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show. It's Wrestling with Entertainment, bringing you the latest exclusive breaking news, previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, AEW, New Japan, and everything in between every Saturday, and interviewing all the hottest independent talent on Wednesday on YouTube and CastBox. I'm that guy, James J, alongside the leader of Squash Squad, Kaliko Yas. Uh, for the final wrestling entertainment for Black History Month, a little Hennessy Black straight. And the American Scooter Dust. Actually, no. I am the Lithuanian Scooter Dust tonight. I'm not exactly sure if this is how a Lithuanian sounds, but hey, what are you going to do? For the purposes (laughs) of this episode, let's go with that. Let's stick with it. And uh, it's a great day for wrestling because it's Coleco's birthday. Happy birthday, Coleco Yachts. Man, don't don't be don't be lying. Don't lie to him. I'm a leap year baby. So for those of the listeners, I'm a leap year baby. I was born on the 29th of February, which is funny because Facebook tricks them into saying that my birthday is both February 28th and March 1st. So I'll take all the attention. I ain't even gonna lie. Fuck it, I'll take it. Hold that, Zuckerberg. Cool. And fun fact, the last leap year was last year, and I spent that day meeting The Undertaker. Fucking co- fuck COVID and all. <laughs> and that's a great way to spend a leap, uh, a leap year. Oh, yeah, it was cool. Coco Beware was cool as shit. We were talking about, I had a conversation about him about a match that he had in Memphis where, like, he kind of oh, gave the guy the Rick Rude treatment with the wrestler, where he was like beating the brakes off of him, and it wasn't like for 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 fake fake. It was for real real. Was I was shoot. like, man, did that dude? I was like, did he owe you money? <laughs> 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 he never answered me. Somebody, but, you know, somebody that doesn't owe us money. Sean Phoenix was last week uh, on our interview. Uh. What a great interview, two parts, two and a half hours with an incredible individual. Uh, My favorite part would possibly be that even though, you know, we know that, you know, wrestling is kayfabe, and he was still maybe a little hesitant to tell us the behind the scenes uh, workings of the business, which I kind of appreciate and maybe is a lost art nowadays. No? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's you know we're we're living in an age where, God, I and I, I hate to bring up this term, but yeah, you know, we're living in the age of the snowflake, where everything is, everything is taken seriously, and you know, wrestling is one area where the seriousness of it is supposed to be what it, you know what is is the seriousness of it is supposed to be that's not ex- exactly serious right you know it's a it's a it's a catch 22 and you know i i appreciate you know talent still trying to keep kayfabe but at the same time you know we're acknowledging that, you know, kayfabe is, you know, an illusion. And if you could safely, you know, you, uh, tell the difference between, you know, when someone's acting in kayfabe and someone's not, then you're in a good spot. And Sean did that perfectly. Next week, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I agree with that. But the fact that he was able to blend those two was just 
immaculate. But then again, the whole conversation to me was just, it didn't even feel like in the business. It just felt like getting to know a person and especially with that person, a uh, person of his caliber. And he's been through trials and tribulations for him to share those things and for us to, you know, laugh and joke and be able to get serious. If you're able to laugh, you're able to like get sympathy and do everything with that conversation and get motivated at the same time. That's why I feel like that interview was like the quintessential interview that we've done. No shade to nobody else, but I just felt like that interview, it made us feel, made me feel more motivated and happy that we do what we do. When we, when we open up the wrestling with uh, entertainment uh, interview school, that will be the orientation video. And, uh, and you get- coming up next next week on the show, uh, Maria Chantel, uh, a CCW girl. Uh, this was an incredible interview with somebody. I think not maybe a lot of people know, but I think people are going to be very aware of in the very near future. She is a force to be reckoned with, no? Well, yeah, I I definitely say so. I'd say so, too. But I think this interview also is uh, another diamond in the sense that it's very rare to... Especially, this is like, I, I want to say, this is our first African-American female uh, inter- man, thank, inter- thank, thank in- you. I didn't want to be the, the one interview. That and, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, with with that being said, it, it dealt with go in depth with the advantages and the disadvantages of that. And, and, to, and to me, that's a, this is another like, can't miss. And on the 10th of March, we have a uh, Gabriel Fierza, uh, March 17th. Fierza. 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 Yeah. Fierza. Fierza. Yeah. Fierza. 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 So, if March can't get any matter, hang out with Wrestling with Entertainment every Wednesday before NXT and Dynamite on YouTube and Castbox. Um, on the not so fun side of the news this week, um, the question mark has passed away. Uh, from NWA Wrestling, um. It seemed like he was picking up a lot of steam uh, in 2019. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, COVID happened, and now um, a few days ago, he has passed away. Uh, Scooter, any, um, uh, anything you want to say? Uh, first thing, uh, there, uh, there is no uh, cause of death as of right now. As of um, recording. Yes, uh, as of most likely, this is not a COVID related death uh, uh, passing. So, but uh, Josephus, the question mark, real name, Joseph Hudson passed away unexpectedly on February 24th. You remember him from NWA Power competing in the television title tournament against Colt Cabana, as well as, you know, essentially working two gimmicks at the same time. Um, He, uh, his his wife, Nancy, uh, has launched a GoFundMe. Uh, Funds uh, will go towards his burial and uh, remaining medical expenses, anything that goes past the fifteen thousand dollar goal, will go into a trust fund for his ten-year-old uh, son. In addition to wrestling for the NWA, he was an actor, a writer, filmmaker, musician, teacher, 
and above all, Father. The the positive thing to come out of this, um, as of uh, go the GoFundMe went up at 7 p.m. Eastern on the 25th. The goal was 15 grand by noon yesterday, Friday. It was over twenty-two thousand dollars. By eight p.m. last night, it was over twenty-seven grand. Uh, the link to the GoFundMe will be in the description below on YouTube and Castbox if you wish to make a donation to the uh, the GoFundMe for Josephus Joseph Hudson will be missed. Um, and I'd love to say that that's the only piece of bad news um, this week, but uh, James? Yeah? I think, I think you should uh, deliver this next piece. Um, unfortunately, um, another um, DK Matos has passed away as uh, well. Uh, from CCW, um, we Meadows. do Meadows. My bad. Um, we do a lot of interviews from CCW uh, and their students, and um, I don't even I I was in contact with DK, so unfortunately, that nothing ever came of that, but. Um, it's just a, a sad situation where a young man um, and our thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Uh, there's um, there's there's one match in particular that uh, we're recommending, um, and it's his first main card uh, victory uh, from. A CZW Saturday Night Special uh, in a Fatal 4-Way match with Boom Harden, uh, Karen Bam Bam, and former uh, guest and friend of the show, Christian Robinson. And if you guys uh, want to check that out, we'll, we will uh, hopefully be putting that in the uh, description as well. Maybe uh, we can get Christian to say some uh, some words about DK, but uh, everything that I've read about what everybody has said about DK is that he was a, a, a class act wrestler and a class act human being. And um, we lost another it, good one. And too soon. We, I mean, we don't even know what he could have been. I mean, the potential was limitless. Um, Kaliko, do you want to add anything about either um, Josephus or uh, DK before we uh, move on? Me Mainly, I, I think the one thing that I always add is, is just man, give these people their flowers when they are here, man. It 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 pains me to think, you know, that people don't get their just dues until they're dead, and oh. and this goes in line with um, if you guys remember Prince Marky D of the Fat Boys, yep. Yeah, he died. Yeah, he died, died last week. So it it just goes to show, man. Like, just I, I, I remember singing "Baby, You're a Rich Man." <laughs> I From saw their movie. movies, man. Disorder, and, yeah. Oh, Disorderlies was one of my favorite. Disorderlies, movies. yep. Uh, but tying him in with the wrestlers, it just goes. It pays nothing to pay homage, man. Like it costs nothing to to pay homage and. Show your appreciation for them, especially, you know, nowadays when we're closer connected. Because the one thing I don't want 
not only me as a person, but as us as a show or us as a people to be like is I wish I could have told him or told that person how much we appreciated them or how awesome they were. And, and that to me is the bigger, the bigger point that I, I try to make with any of these hell all our interviews I give them props like it's no tomorrow because hell to be quite honest there is none at least they knew that you know somebody appreciated all their sacrifice and work and uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to their friends and family um you know maybe a little bit of you know good news is, uh, you know, following the death of Hannah Kitamura, um, which we've covered on the show before, uh, Japan has passed a bill simplifying uh, court steps in identifying cyberbullying, uh, making it uh, easier for them to find people that will um, to identify who cyber, uh, cyber bullies more easier. Um, so... Okay. Something good. I don't want to say something good came out of Hannah Kinemore's mm. death, but something something constructive. Yeah, kind of yeah. like kind of like how when uh, right. Lynn Bias died, when Lynn Bias died, they had the drug free program. So it it spawned a whole generation, you know, having the knowledge. And if that's and you know. It's better for the for the all, even though the one is like, you know, sucks. Let's hope, let's hope that it yeah. actually works out for Japan and identifying cyberbullying. Um, and, uh, uh, I do have some uh, some very uh, interesting uh, little tidbits. Maybe we will just knock off here. Sure. Um, so Matt Riddle. Riddle has signed a new contract. He will earn one point two million dollars over the next three years. That's that, that's some damn good money. Uh, could we possibly be seeing Triple H versus Elon Musk at what? WrestleMania? No, not in the slightest. Uh, I beg to differ. In a shoot style promo in talking about of course the uh the first civilian uh, f- uh space flight to mars courtesy of spacex is, is cut happening very soon and triple h got to talking about like this will eventually lead to a WrestleMania on Mars. Which um, is Vince McMahon's dream. And when that happens, Triple H issued a challenge to Elon Musk for that fantasy WrestleMania. So That nobody asked for. Exactly. You know how much the travel packages would be <laughs> to go to Mars? <laughs> <laughs> but... You you would get a uh, commemorative WrestleMania diaper for the flight up. <laughs> oh my god! They better give me a commemorative space seat to take home. Like, um, I, I also, better have my name etched in the ship. <laughs> uh, What's your name WWE in the sand? <laughs> Damn don't right! Eat, don't eat the yellow snow. Uh, <laughs> the WWE Network is set to air a original uh, pr- uh, produced and created documentary on Heaven Fitch. Heaven Fitch, who is that, you might ask? She is the first female to win a high school boys wrestling state championship in North Carolina. This is the first truly original non-WWE related anything to air on the network that the WWE has produced and created. And it will have not, n- nothing to do with pro wrestling. It will be narrated uh, mostly by Beth Phoenix with an introduction by Stephanie McMahon. Well, it uh, sounds like they're trying to get her sign a contract right now. Uh, yes, yes, that is uh, 
True as well. And speaking of contracts, I told you it would happen. Taya Valkyrie, officially a member of the WWE. I mean, so is that one. So is that uh, Brock Lesnar wannabe. So yeah. Rick Steiner's son uh, yep. as well, and um, oh, that uh, Christian Casanova. Christian Casanova, limitless champion, and as well, they yeah, some they got somebody else's brother who was already in the performance center. I didn't write that name down. Dang it. Um, Seems like uh, WWE is kind of doubling down on, you know, new talent from the indies. Um, Because, you know, they need those guys. Um, Ty Valkyrie is not a surprise considering, you know, her husband is on the main roster. Well, considering that he's uh, suffered a knee injury and will be out Damn. for um, a um, unspecified amount of time. Uh, may still no word on whether the injury um, is severe. If somebody sneezed, God bless you. No, it's a cough. Uh, okay. Uh, Lacey Evans' inju- injury is legitimate. She is indeed pregnant. He said it, not me. Um, the so eight, we're talking eight, about how she got injured earlier this week as well. Um, Anna J. Wait a minute. Yeah, Anna J. has got injured. Wait a minute. Lacey's actually injured or not pregnant? Pregnant? No, she's pregnant. But James calls pregnancy an injury. I mean, if pregnancy's keeps, not an injury. If it keeps you out of of action, then it's probably an injury. That's not an um, injury. Uh, Kenny Omega has admitted to stealing Lady Gaga's dogs. I think we both no, admitted no, that at one point. That, no, that I mean, that's a, that's a um, weird thing to admit, but... I mean, Kenny's collecting everything, so, um... But AEW finally uh, hits the mobile app market with the release of AEW Casino Double or Nothing, now in the Apple App Store. It's basically a casino. With AEW guys on it. That's it. <laughs> Do I win money with that bitch? No! It's just oh, I guess, they, I, I guess they have to have it so they could pay the big show his money. And let's talk about it. Uh, Paul, <laughs> Paul White. Segway. Paul White, uh, the big show, the giant, whatever you want to call him, is now all elite. Captain Insano. I don't think, uh, and I talked to Scooter about this earlier this week. Uh, This is a big blow to WWE in the sense that AEW could scoop up a big name like the Big Show. But not necessarily a big name for AEW because I don't think they would know what to do with a Big Show. Am I right? Am I wrong? Counterpoint... Uh, here's my problem with this. So, and and it's and it was simply put in a meme. The AE, AEW fans, when they look at AEW signing WWE former stars that they swore that they weren't going to sign, that is the big issue I have. Like, it's like you're the opposite of what you're doing. I get it that it's a business, but it's funny when that business sense have to kick in instead of that anti WWE shit. I yeah, I mean, and the, the fact that it it happened so fast. It, this was like this was almost less than forty eight hours turnaround after. Um, after Vince, uh, I see no. Technically, no. That's not true because a the Big Show and Vince couldn't agree on new terms for a contract, and Tony Khan had made an offer to him, and Big Show went to Vince and said, "If you match it, 
I'll sign. I'll resign. It said no. Yeah, I mean, WWE had already really semi-retired Big Show already. So yeah, like eight times. Yeah. Yeah. So and I mean, it kind of feels like they they already have a new Big Show with uh, with Braun Strowman. And they kind of put him in the closet and break glass uh, in case of emergency, so to speak. And, you know, does the, does the Big Show deserve better than that type of treatment? Or was WWE right in maybe doing that to him? It depends on what your perspective is. Yeah. If you're trying to make room, if you're one of the groups that's saying, oh my God, they're tired of them using all the old timers and they need to create new stars, then this is what they have to do in order to give those new stars a clear platform instead of having to rely on them beating up on old stars. If you're the one of the latter, then it, it sucks. But I mean, at the end of the day, I, I think Big Show made a lot of money with WWE. He, he, I'm pretty sure he appreciates it. And I, I wouldn't think, you know, he would go there unless, you know, he had already told Vince. Because he's, I see, it seems like he's one of those guys. Uh, the yeah, the, uh huh. Yeah. The, um, the other thing with Big Show is that we've always heard that he's been, he's one of the, uh, smarter guys when it comes to saving his money. Um, I mean, a 20-year career in the WWE you know, and a four-year career in WCW. Um, you know, they're really, I mean, there was really nothing left for Big Show to really do in WWE. Um, why on earth? Um, Paul White would want to be the you know the, uh, the color commentator for the second edition of AEW Dark. Advanced Darkness. Ooh, advanced darkness. <laughs> there, there, a, <laughs> thank you, SpongeBob. Hey, don't tell me uh, SpongeBob hasn't taught you anything educational. Well, uh, it, it's told me that I don't want to hit rock bottom. Uh, Boo! Or get hit with a rock bottom, but I mean, I think Tony Khan just wanted this so they could put Big Show on the Go Big Show. You know, I heard about that. <laughs> that sounds like some shit. Big Show on the Go Big Show. Yep. Uh, and and it's suddenly it's going to be a rebrand. And, 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 you know, considering that the WWE was like investing in yeah, uh, there's a Big Show sitcom the Big Show On show. Netflix. And it's got awful. I got through, what, maybe three minutes before I took it off and said this is garbage? Um, they, they use it in, uh, they use it in Rikers. Uh, you, ha you have the choice of solitary confinement or watching the Big Show show. Damn. That's some... Uh, uh, the Big Show show, because I am not trying to be in solitary, fam. I'd be laughing my ass off at the big show. <laughs> Fuck that confinement. Fuck that shit. Go, big show. Go, go, big show. I know. I'd be fucking making it an anime sound. Go, big show. Go, Talking big show. about WWE's new big show, Bad Bunny. I mean, I it, it kind of seemed like something we could have, you know, slid underneath the rug and not really talk about, but he's already number four on their top 
merchandise uh, sellers. Uh, he's promoting he number one for a minute. He's promoting the hell out of Damien Priest, and he came on Saturday Night Live with the twenty four seven championship. Um, in a sense, gotta give the guy his props, but is it is it really the smartest thing to promote Ban Funny considering you know what kind of star he is or? What are your guys' thoughts on Bad Bunny? Because yeah, obviously it's this a is a match. Yeah, nah. Now let's go. Um, but well, yeah. one, there should have been a title change on SNL where Pete Davidson won the belt for a minute. Um, the, you know, it seems the WWE really likes to push. Uh, superstars is, or, or people that have beat COVID. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, okay. And yet but they still don't not, have Lois Green on their show. Yeah. Let's not forget that Bad Bunny was the spokesperson for Corona Beer in a commercial with Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, which goes, is yeah, hilarious. What's up, player? What's up, player? No player, it's player. Player. <laughs> I get it, player. I get it, player. So how you doing, bunny? Amazing, too, uh, bud. Uh, uh-uh. I mean, I, I, considering that, you know, that bad buddy was is penciled in for a tag team match against Miz and Morrison, which now is apparently off the table... Um, as of right now, who knows what we'll know tomorrow, but, um, yeah, I mean, like, I, 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 I really wish it was somebody that was, wasn't, uh, so, somebody that was more relatable to everybody else, because Bad Bunny is, is a niche musician. Right. Mm, they did it with a purpose. Yeah. Because what is the one demographic they have been trying to get for Mexico. like 10 years? The Latin Mexico. community. I was going to say the Mexicans uh, from Canada, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Fuerza. Shout out to Anywho, they've been trying to get the Latin community for years, and they got the biggest star in the sense of bad. I'll put it: this, Bad Bunny being there, and it's funny because everybody was like, "Oh my God, who is Bad Bunny?" And the Latin community was like, "Hell yeah, we we paying attention now," <laughs> and and that's what they wanted. They wanted. The lad, and now they are going to be driving in droves. And now he attached to another person of Latin descent, Damien Priest, right. which you know he gets the rub from being with Bad Bunny, therefore trying to push him as a Latin star. Although Damien Priest is from New York, but that's a yeah. whole nother story. But the point is, is that it's. It's the crossover. Yeah, they are. There are Mexicans from New York. (laughs) But they're Puerto Rican. So that's what Uh, I'm trying uh, to get. (laughs) Oh. oh. So, yeah, they're Puerto Rican. We have to have Uh, geography. Yeah, we got to have geography. Uh, But, yeah, that's the whole point of it. It's, It's for the Latin community. And no one complained about this when in the 80s it was like Cindy Lauper. You know oh, what I'm saying? True. I mean, but or no one have, complained. We have internet I mean, back then, so who knows? I mean, that's, when, that, that's true, but no one complained when Wale jumped in that bitch. Like, I mean... I mean, eh. I, I, I mean, I mean that kind of that led to one of the most uh, infamous... Uh, Shoot, uh, rap battles in all yeah. time, yeah, yeah, where, buddy. You know, where 
they actually got away with referencing Xavier Woods' participation in certain extracurricular activities. Activities, exactly. So, to me, music and wrestling is always going to be there. And I, I'd be surprised if they don't pull, like, uh, Action Bronson, who's really into wrestling, and get more musicians into it because it's a win-win. It's a collaboration. That's the whole point of it. Bad Bunny becomes a bigger star. WWE gets a Latin outreach. I mean, win-win. I mean, 20 years ago, it was Carl Malone, and 20 years later, it's Post Malone. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dennis uh, Rock. <laughs> That's a good one. Carl Malone to Post Malone. Uh, speaking of the um, What's um, going in circles the, at this point? Latino market, they the WWE has also um, signed a second generation oh, yeah. uh, Mexican uh, superstar a, what, by the name of uh, Jennifer Iglesias, full name Jennifer Michelle Cantu Iglesias. I'm sorry, I don't know why I put the emphasis on that. Uh, Iglesias is the daughter of Mexican wrestler Bronco. Her father was the first wrestler to use the Bronco name in Mexico and usually competed for CMLL. He later wrestled as Spider-Man and after losing his mask in 96 became Gigolo. Gigolo. Uh, She's an Olympic weightlifter uh, and as well as a Pan American Games competitor, uh, she was trading for the Tokyo Olympics, and, and was told that she needed to gain fifteen pounds uh, to to continue training, which was not possible due to and some sort of undisclosed health issue. But she started trading for a wrestling career in twenty nineteen. Uh, been working with Mexican wrestling legend and CML L ring announcer Tony Salazar. Uh, this, this, if I if I had described this woman in three words, Latina Shayna Baszler. Hmm. Interesting. I think we'll. Uh... We'll see who comes out of you know all these signees, who are the winners and who are the losers. But I think that might be a conversation for another time. And uh, we'll conclude our news portion of the show for tonight. And next week, uh, as of this taping. None of us have seen the John Moxley Kenta match. Uh, we will cover everything that match uh, and everything going on in New Japan at the moment um, next week on the show. So stay tuned. Uh, but for now, we are wrestling with WWE Elimination Chamber preview. Uh, it was last uh, Sunday, and if you were smart, how did you listen to it, Scooter? You took those big old flaps on the side of your head, you called your ears, you put some headphones on, you open up the mixer app, you go to the UNB Sports 2 channel, and you listen to myself and James J. give me the best dang Mother smurfing commentary in the world today on the remix. So you could say mother French toast there. I mean, you could you could drop the f bomb if you want to. I'm trying to restrain. I'm currently in uh, Lent and all that's good stuff. Uh, but hey, you could cost all you want. Um, like. Okay, filter. This is an interesting. Uh, inter- this was an interesting peak preview. Uh, things are a little bit more clear on the on the road to WrestleMania. Overall, uh, what did you think about the show, Kaliko? The show as a whole. I wouldn't say clear. The, the it got a little I would, muckier. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't say whole either. 
Yeah, it, it, it got a little muckier on one side, but the rest of it, it kind of bore itself out. Uh, it had a little, it's got a roadblock heading to the fast lane. Pun intended, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but overall, <laughs> it <was> a, <laughs> overall, it was a good show. Overall, pretty good show, solid show. What say you, Scootle? Yes, solid show, but. I think this is one of the first times a pay-per-view has ever actually made itself redundant. I mean, if the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match was basically for nothing. Yeah. It it really was when you think about it. It just means... I mean, not, not to mention that, honestly, every uh, every dirt sheet was calling for Cesaro. You and uh, Calico and even Drew um, called Cesaro. And, yes, we got Daniel Bryan, uh, and that seems to be what's going on you know, in Fastlane. And, and whatnot, which I was really hoping for Edge and Christian against Roman and Jay. Uh, that's apparently not going to happen. Um, if you didn't think that The Miz was going to cash in, uh, then you're as blind as Anne Frank. Hmm. I mean um, Helen Keller. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let, let's get into this. Um... SmackDown Elimination Chamber match, Daniel Bryan defeated Cesaro, Jay Uso, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and King Corbin. Um, to me, it kind of shows you the, the stark contrast of talent on Raw and SmackDown, that you only have two former world champions in this match, one uh, former tag, well, two former tag team guys, uh, and... Tim Corbin, I mean, and and like you said, it was kind of redundant, but the match overall was decent, right? I mean, yes, and when I'm looking at it statistically, yeah, the right man won. Um, okay, yes, yeah, so this is Daniel Bryan's fifth elimination chamber match, which which now puts him in the. T- Top three of uh, chamber appearances. Um, n- nothing really surprising except for uh, Jay Uso's uh, ability to get so many frequent flyer miles. Um, I'm overrated. I'm underrated with that. But, I mean, I really. I think I think I would have been more interested had it come down to Daniel Bryan and Cesaro. Yeah. Yep. But J- Jay had to be the guy because yeah, Jay had to be the hurdle. He's the hurdle to the table. <laughs> he's the, he's he's the he's the uh the what's the word I'm looking for. He's the waitress to the table. The waiter to the table. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, uh, I, I believe the term you're looking for is Praetorian. Something like that. There you go. A Praetorian guard to the you know the emperor, if you will. If we're Indeed. getting super technical about it. But continue, Kalika. Yep. But now nah, I let Scooter get back to that point. Cause, and, and, and the only reason it was lack of talent because SmackDown's supposed to be like the, the wrestling show slash land of opportunity. So, I mean, but even with that being said, the story for SmackDown's chamber match was really good. I mean, it the story overall for SmackDown has been pretty decent the last... I want to say since Roman got back, it's been pretty good, so... You can't knock it for them continuing with that arc. Um, 
<laughs> Ride that bitch to the wheel fall off. Yeah. I mean, I mean, at at this point, you know, SmackDown like, did some unusual things to fill the chamber match. You know, with instead of having singles matches, you know, they had tag team matches. So and just, the tag team uh, winners won. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I mean, at this point, I'm wondering would there would there be some sort of benefit to maybe having the chamber be a quest of some kind and your entire year determines how you if you get a spot and you have to keep fighting to defend that spot that seems like a lot of of uh yeah that sounds like a g1 <laughs> they, they could call it the g4 climax <laughs> but keep in mind, Roman was supposed to be in it, and he finessed himself out of it. So that's where the story is. And um, then we have uh, and, Roman defeating Daniel Bryan right after the match. Um, perfect I, heel heat. <laughs> I don't think anybody kind of saw that not coming. You know, even Stevie Wonder. Saw that coming, so... And then after the match, Edge attacked Roman and proclaimed that he would be challenging him at WrestleMania, uh, our first match set for um, WrestleMania 37. Um, but kind of what Scooter said, considering that Edge made that... that uh, made the match ready for Mania, it kind of made no sense to have what they did in the chain for. So, my question is, would it have been, been better if Roman had just defended the championship in a singles match and maybe used the chain for, for another match? Maybe a tag team or Asuka, who didn't have a match that night? Um... No. What 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 do you nah. think? It nah, and the reason why is because they're Romans making it to where him Romans positioning himself in essence to be like, motherfucker, you gotta earn your way to get to me. You just don't get to me for free. You see what I'm saying? Right. So so he's making himself a premium price to pay. And the elimination chamber in itself was the price that they had to pay to face Roman, right? Edge didn't have, and the reason why I thought Edge was going to go with Roman was because of that exact premium price I was trying to talk, that I was talking about. Right. Because Edge had the leverage. Roman didn't have the leverage. Roman had the leverage over the chamber match and used it as such, and he couldn't control who Edge would pick. So he kept bugging the fuck out of Edge to be like, you ain't main event until you face me. That's why when, when he said that, 98%. That's what I, <laughs> that little line shot my little rankings up to 98% because I'm like, He's basically taunting Edge to like, bitch, until you see me, you ain't seeing nobody else. Sure. And it worked. Sure, honey, do you want to add to that? Nope, I think, uh, I think it's time to move on. Then we have um, Sheena Baseball and Nia Jax uh, defeating. Uh, actually, no, my bad. Uh, we have uh, Matt, uh, we have Riddle defeating Bobby Lashley and John Morrison to win the United States Championship. Uh, Riddle's first uh, major championship in WWE. Uh, Bobby Lashley has obviously gone on to bigger and better things, as we'll talk about a little bit later, uh, which was one of Drew's predictions last week on the show as well. Um, hey, my prediction. Uh, 
No, that Bobby Lashley was going on to bigger, better things. Yeah, I said that too. Let's give the new guy some credit. <laughs> give me my fucking props, damn it. <laughs> you can't go Gano, damn it. <laughs> uh, first star for uh, Riddle winning the championship, right, Carl? Well, let's 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 uh, let's call it by what its name is now, Travis. Right. The United States Champion yes. is he, named Travis. He named him Travis. Yes. Uh, which honestly, Travis Riddle would probably be a kick-ass name for <laughs> a star. Um. Oh, I again I hope and you know this was addressed on the pre-show Morrison by the way winning his way in on the kickoff show uh after it was revealed that Keith Lee was not going to uh be uh par- uh part of it. Uh but yet Mia Yim shows up on Raw. Hmm. Uh I know why they did that though. Yeah. Oh and up oh, Ed. By the way, she will remain reckoning Damien Priest's finishing move. <laughs> now be known as, I can't remember what they call it now. <laughs> but, uh, so, I, I don't know. The bunny hop. I don't know. Adam Rose. Uh, <laughs> I hope I this Adam leads Rose. to Riddle yeah, it, being less of a lemon. God, now I got that in my head. Uh, um, more, more, a little bit more serious. A little less, you know, Smokey McPot. Uh, I mean, I mean, he named I expect- it all Travis. What, what do you, what do you think this is going to? Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty if, much. If, if I, if I had to guess, Hoboken, New Jersey. Um. Oh, I, I expect uh, Riddle next week to pull out the Continuum Transfunctioner. Alrighty. No dude, dude, where's my car reference? I mean... Yes. It's going to be like a dude, where's my belt? And then... No and then. No, it would be bro, where's my belt? Exactly. There you go. Then fire this man. Let's and you you talked about it before. Keat Lee not being a part of the match. Uh, what's going on with Keat Lee? It seems like opportunities waiting for him, and he's not there to answer the door. Oh no, it's not that he's not there to answer no. the door. It was because I mean, triple threat match. Somebody was going to take the pin and. Uh, to me, that was a move to protect Keith Lee. Uh, plus, yeah, the exposure to COVID, but let's just call this what it really was. Mia Yim was just given t- t- such good headache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, he did. Yes, yeah, she does. But I'm not going to go there. But, yeah, it was, mainly, it was mainly because Morrison would take the pin. And Keith Lee, honestly, it could make a, a arc for Keith Lee to face Riddle in the sense that the only reason you got it because I wasn't there. True. Um, and plus, it, it with Lashley, it, it wouldn't have looked right for Lashley to lose the belt. To get pinned and then try to go for the heavyweight title. Right. Does it make sense? And yeah. they really like pushed him strong in that match. Right. Not even strong in that match. After that match, because it it was the thing where he where he was in the ring and he was pissed. And you usually never see a loser in the ring that pissed. Like usually, especially with a face. Why the hell would the fate? Because usually winning the belt and running up the ramp is a heel move. Right. Yeah. So Riddle doing that was for the purpose of Lashley 
being pissed and for what to follow. So. Next match. See, copious notes, paste. <laughs> Next match in the baseball, and Anaya Jax defeated Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair uh, to retain the Women's Tag Team Championship. Uh, honestly, this was just basically drawn together because uh, Lacey, en- uh, Lacey Evans got injured, so yeah. Uh, I was just going to say it's redundant in the sense that they might as well just turn Sasha Banks heel already. I feel like Sasha Banks is about to be what Kamala is. Right? I mean, am I the only one, the only one mean, catching that vibe? I mean, I mean with, the, with Reginald, you know, crushing on her. Yeah. Um, I mean, we well, why, why wouldn't Carmella be complaining about this? Seems exactly. Like this happen, right? Yep. Um, but, but as of uh, as of last night, it is official. Sasha, Bianca, WrestleMania. I mean, you knew that. I mean, yeah. as soon as yeah. Bianca won, that was like hundred yeah. percent SmackDown. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, it, it's it. That was ten percent. It's got a, It's got the. Yeah, it's got great potential, and it's got the. The potential if the WWE doesn't fucking drop the ball with Bianca and gives her that moment, it's like, got potential in the sense that it's stylistically a great match. It could be that, stylistically that, the greatest match. That it not have. potentially be a so stealer. And it also the the historical ramifications. Oh yeah. As well, in, in, in terms of two African American women, yes, possibly quote unquote main eventing a WrestleMania. Yeah, even with that context, yeah, that's one big context. And then, to me, more is the stylistically thing. I, I feel like strength versus speed and agility is is going to be the the calling card for the match. But we'll get there down the line. But and, keep and, on, scooter. I mean, Keep preaching. To, to see that, you know, the, the potential moment of when Montez Ford comes down and puts his wife up on his shoulders. Yes, full circle. You know? Full circle. Hmm. I, I, I wrote that in the tweet, too. I was like, Bianca Belair is going full circle. She started literally running into WrestleMania, and now she's – First year r- running into WrestleMania, hopefully with the chip. We'll see what happens there. Uh, and then we have uh, the main event, or the, well, the build main event. Uh, Raw Elimination Chamber, WWE Champion Drew McIntyre defeated Sheamus, Jeff Hardy, Randy Orton, Kofi Kingston, and AJ Styles. Uh, uh, please let's acknowledge the fact that Kofi checked behind him for Edge. Yes, that is correct. I, let's also let's also acknowledge the fact that Kofi had the line of the night when Randy walked into the, the damn chamber. It was like, damn, them capsules, whoa, dog, I see. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm cracking the fuck up. Crack I was I was really hoping for a, a you know a, a backstage interaction between Kofi and Edge, where Kofi would come walking by Edge. Edge would be like, "Don't worry, I'm not going to attack you this time." <laughs> that would have been pretty cool. But um, it, just that he, it was a nod that we that everybody knew that was just appreciated. Yeah, yep. I, I mean, you you, you talk about. Surprises in uh, this. The fact that not only did Kofi pick up an elimination, he eliminated Randy Orton, and he eliminated Randy Orton cleanly with no uh, implication from the Fiend or Alexa Bliss. Which, oh my God, which the next night it made sense. Because right. the way he broke it down, it was like, holy shit, yeah. 
If he's not PWI number one next this year, I'm gonna be fucking pissed. Oh, he's he, he ain't wrestling observer for award number one. That's for sure. I know. So McIntyre picks up the win. Uh, he's then attacked by Bobby Lashley after the match, uh, allowing Demis to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase. And new WWE champion, The Miz. Uh, 11 years uh, after his first, uh, his first right. WWE uh, title run. Um, so, yeah, and kind of reminiscent of when Edge did it at uh, New Year's Revolution in 2006, so to speak. Uh, and something that Scooter had maybe alluded to last week on the show, and let's hope that that's as far as his prediction goes, and maybe not the second half of what he had predicted comes true. Uh, there, there was that other thing I had mentioned that, yeah, you know, the, the WWE was essentially booking themselves into a corner because Money in the Bank is the next pay-per-view after WrestleMania. And the fact that the contract holder has a year. Year. But Miz's year doesn't begin didn't begin when Money in the Bank began. It began when he won it at TLC. Exactly. Which yeah. yeah that, and yeah. the possibility of having Miz, two two Money in the Bank briefcases for Miz. Like, I think you give WWE too much credit to actually think of something like that. I mean, they you got to give them credit for the way that he used it and got it back. That's very rare, which si- signified the rule that the actual person has to cash in the briefcase. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> you got to give them that much. <laughs> These things... I, they don't stick to the rules a lot, but when they do, it's like okay, I get it. And to be quite honest, I, I didn't, I barely even remembered that it was Morrison that handed out the handed out the briefcase. Oh yeah, I remember it was Morrison. Morrison yeah, gave Morrison. the briefcase. <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't the one that actually thought of that when it actually happened. Somebody had to point it out to me. But yeah. then, like the next week, the uh, the Monday, I was like, "Yeah, that that makes sense." That and and you would have realized that when they had the whole jam- so like as much as we say that they don't care about rules, which to me, like the thirty year <laughs> rule and whatever, they are when it comes to the money in the bank. I will say they strict, especially when like the year Carmella um, won it and James L. Worth took the briefcase and gave it to her. Like, all that shit. I will give them props. They are fucking strict with well, that shit. By, by that definition, then, uh, Otis should have never had the money. Otis in the should have never had the money in the bank briefcase. Because exactly. Nobody, because, no, while it was pulled down, he didn't pull it down. It down. fell in to his head. So That's why they probably fucking had him lose it to the Miz in the first place. <laughs> I mean, that, it was just bad booking from the very beginning with Otis. Uh, with a crowd, it probably would have been better. Big, yeah. It would have been bigger with a crowd. Well, Especially... Could... Continue. Crowds love the fat guys. They love the fat guys. Yeah, who doesn't love the fat guy? Biggie small, son. But, I mean... <laughs> Everything is better with a crowd, but this is all a dream. So, Mister is the new WWE champion. Right call, wrong call. Wait, maybe wait and see. What do you say, Kalita? I'm gonna use this theory, and 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 hear me out. It's gonna come. It's gonna come. It's gonna come. Remember when Brock Le- you were there with me. You remember when Brock Lesnar beat the shit out of Kofi Kingston at SmackDown yep. and uh I was right beside you in LA. You were right, you were right beside me and I was fucking hurting. <laughs> remember that? 
Yes. So, remember when Brock left with the belt? Yeah. What was the only belt left? The Intercontinental belt, right? Yeah. Who was the Intercontinental champion? Biggie. What's the best? The Intercontinental The Mitt. Oh, the Mitt was the Intercontinental champion at the time. Yep. Yeah, I thought you were saying who's the Intercontinental champion now. Yeah. Miz yeah. was the, the, the uh, Miz was the IC champion at the time, therefore making him the top premium champion of SmackDown. He was the de facto guy, right? Because he showed up every week. We all knew Brock was a champ, but we knew he wasn't going to come every week. I, I felt like the Miz, he, he, as much as people bitch about him, he earned this bitch. I ain't even going to lie to you. He earned it, but he also had to deal with other people getting the turn because they're bigger, they're faster, they got a bigger name. And all he did was keep kept doing his shit. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, he should have been champ at least four years ago. Minimum four years ago. But there was no there was no structure for him to be the champion. So th- this is a good time. People love, lo- and especially because he's the type of heel. Like you remember. Y- like we'll get into it when he when uh when we go to Raw, his face when when they announce that whole shit with Lashley and him, that that is why that little shit right there is why he's the perfect heel because he's a heel that everyone knows they can beat, but he's gonna swindle his shit to the end of the day. He's gonna swindle his shit to the end, and that's what I think he, it's a, a good time. Now, for him, because eventually he's gonna lose it. Right. But which, he gets one yeah. more rain than Kofi. I mean, shit, that's yeah, what he's which, which now makes my theory sound like make a lot more sense now. <laughs> I I would hold. I'm gonna wait to see what they do with the Lashley thing. Because but, remember when I was telling you like. Lashley would lose, and I feel like that the hurt business is kind of like because he's never he, he's always every time he's there he's not there with the hurt business he's just there with MVP right it's kind of like he's in his own world and in this setting he's a face whether we I mean he's a heel but to the people he's a face because he's getting what his supposed to be owed right yeah and, so uh, that's where i think it's going to be a little awkward another thing that's Continue. awkward uh since nakamura was intercontinental champion uh in october of uh 2019 not the miss fucking a son <laughs> <bitch>. <laughs> uh, it's good wait a minute was it nakamura you know. no 2019 2019 yeah that no. was that, that wasn't when Brock beat Kobe. That was 2018. No. Yeah, that was 2018. No, it's 2019. Yeah. No. No. Wait a minute. When did the new Wait. Intercontinental Championship come? Uh, that was that, that was Sammy's gift to Shinsuke. Yes. And uh, it hurt, uh, the 20th anniversary, the first SmackDown on Fox was uh, yeah, October, it's, I mean, uh, October 2019. October 4th, yeah, October 4th, 2019. Yep. Son of a bitch. I just threw my whole <laughs> shit out the water. <laughs> Fucking Hennessy. <laughs> Fucking Hennessy. I blame uh, the Hennessy. There you go. Scooter, want to add to uh, uh, the whole Miz winning the championship, not this uh, uh, Nakamura debate? <laughs> Um, Why you gotta hate Jane? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, just getting the fuck straight. The, you know, it, the, there are, the WWE doesn't have any idea what it's doing with the WWE Championship as it pertains to WrestleMania. Um, I expect 
Drew to uh, cause uh, Bobby to get disqualified. Um, you probably get you probably get the triple threat at Fastlane if we don't see a certain somebody. That's Obi-Wan Cena. Moment. Wan, <laughs> Wan Cena. Monse- Wan Cena. Wan Cena. So he's uh, Mexican Italian. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and he's from Canada, damn it. <laughs> Mexican Canadian from Boston. Got it. <laughs> um, in fact, I, honestly, if Miz is still champion by Mania, who really ends up being the perfect opponent? The guy that he wrestled that would be ten years ago that just wants the only blemish on his WrestleMania record erased. Wait a minute, that's not the only blemish that, on his. Yeah, record. that's definitely not the only Champion, blemish on no. championship. No, he lost the triple threat to Rand, uh, Randy Orton. Boom, bitch, facts. <laughs> but was he pinned? Doesn't matter. He lost. True, but he wasn't pinned, and that makes all the difference. And that's what I'm he lost to the rock. Oh. Yeah, he lost to the rock. And, 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 and then something else popped up into my head. Would the Miz have the balls to call out the rock the same way he did when he first called out John Cena? Ooh. Well, he definitely has the balls. Uh, and, and The Rock said that which, he wasn't going to be able to come to WrestleMania I know, this year. I know. Which well, means may, he's may, definitely going to be there. Uh, unless yeah, they said that at 32, and then he popped his ass yeah. out of nowhere. And then, uh, unless it's you know, Young Rock versus The Miz. Young uh, Rock? <laughs> young Dwayne? <laughs> oh, oh, young oh, Tomas? They, call they called him, what did they call him, Dewey? Dewey. Dewey. And he calls and himself kid. Tumas. 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 There you go. <laughs> uh, personally, I'd like to see the Miz defend the belt against his wife. I would like you're trying to, to break up a home. Why are you trying to break up a happy home? Bro? I would like it to see the Miz defend the It would be a sex match. Oh. First one, first one to uh, orgasm loses. <laughs> and with I that, mean... let's uh, wrap up our <laughs> elimination chamber uh, preview, uh, a review actually. Mm. Uh, Scooter, the show overall, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. Uh, thumbs up, my whole Coleco. I give it a thumbs up because as much as they don't do the the wonders WWE can do when they don't have to deal with commercial breaks, <laughs> it's sponsors. I, and shit. I, I, the I, wonders. I, I, I'll take it back. Money. I'll think, I'll give it a thumbs up, but it's a thumb that's missing half of it. <laughs> so it's only like one. So it's a nub. So a stub. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going with a thumbs in the middle. Uh, that will conclude our coverage of Elimination Chamber. Uh, next week, we'll be talking all things New Japan and whatever else comes up in the week. Everybody knows that anything could happen in a week when it comes to pro wrestling. Um, until then, please like, subscribe, comment, put on YouTube and chat box. Catch our interview with Navea Chantel this upcoming Wednesday. And uh, follow the show on social media as well. Uh, For everything uh, wrestling with entertainment related, upcoming interviews, news, whatever, uh, we are at Wrestling with E. To follow us individually, I am at JamesJ993. Where can they find Kalika Yachts? 
You can find me repping for all the Leap Year Babies at I Am Coleco. Fun fact, Ja Rule, Leap Year Baby. Look Not that me. fun. <laughs> <laughs> what can they find, Scooter Dust? <laughs> you, 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 you can find me in your bathtub with the shower curtain pulled all the way back. <laughs> but as well, if you want to find me on the social mediums, you can find me. I don't know why I started talking like I'm Jamaican. At Scooter Dust and hold it down for the UND network at UNBS Wrestling. Smash the fuck out of it! Well, I mean, nuts. I mean. <laughs> You went from Lithuania to Jamaican. So, hey, at least your geography is good. Jamaican. <laughs> wow, wow. Fuck Little maker, man. <laughs> Don't at me, bro. Come at me, bro. <laughs> yeah, is the tree made out of ganja? Because we want to smoke the Christmas tree. For Coleco Yachts, Scooter Dust, I'm James Shea, and this has been Wrestling With Entertainment. Reggae Shark!